around the finger. Well, so many of you left comments about what you want me to make videos on. I appreciate that a lot. Man, I'm going to have fun uh, following up on some of your suggestions. And today, one of them is, how do you find your queen? Now, we need to go back into this hive that we put a queen into. Remember, we lost queen number 60. I put a queen in there in a few videos ago. We gave them a queen out of one of my mating nooks. We're going to see if that queen got accepted. She's a mated queen. So if indeed they needed her, I think they would have eaten through that candy. I made queen candy with you. You saw how I did it. And uh, so we're going to go in there today, see if we can find that queen. Hopefully, She's up near the top because that hive has a, a big, heavy, uh, deep full of honey that I don't want to have to move again. Let's get started. Well, you know me, I'm going to bring my gloves just in case I start getting stung too many times on the hands. But I like to start, uh, if I can, not wearing gloves. We'll see how that goes. I've got my other uh, hive set up down here, so if I need to actually move this big super, deep super over there, I won't have to lift it too tall. Let's start by smoking under the top cover. I always like to look at the top cover to see what's going on as far as small high beetle. No small high beetle. That's outstanding. And we can see the queen cage right there. It has been emptied out. Look at that. Well, as you can tell, that cage has been emptied out completely. There's nobody home. Ate my candy and hopefully the queen is out walking around. Let's see if we can find her. Well, I don't want to smoke too much. I don't want to run my queen down. Just a little bit of smoke. And then let's take a look uh, maybe around the cage area where we had the queen cage. See if maybe she's still up in the super. It's likely that she may have gravitated down where she may have found some uh, open comb that was prepared for her. So that's probably what we're going to find or where we're going to find her. Well, that's just a beautiful piece of capped honey, so she would not be on that frame. No way it would be rare. Let's set that aside just for a second. And all of these, I mean, these need harvested. I'm going to be making a video really soon about harvesting honey. And so you can see that these frames are actually, you know, if you want to harvest these, these frames are ready. I don't see any open brood at all, so this super has to come off. So let's put this frame back in there. So then we'll just pick up this uh, whole entire super box, get down to the next box. Mm, right on the finger. All right, that's one sting on the finger. I'm gonna smoke that. All right, so we'll go ahead and try one more. And if we get another sting on the finger, We'll probably put the gloves on. Move a little slower. All the bees are home. Not many are foraging yet. It's kind of early in the day. Luckily, I did get a frame that's all open where the queen could lay. Kind of take it in the sun. Not a single egg. No eggs. Now let's look for the queen. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some gloves on because we're going to really be uh, doing some major surgery right now. So we might as well glove up. That way we can work a little more efficiently and work a little faster if we have to. And the bees are not going to like us uh, this excessive invasion of their of their hive. So let's go ahead and do some good smoking. Now let's get this super out of the way so that we can land the other super on this top cover that I have upside down. I put it upside down for a reason. That way hopefully it won't stick as bad when I try to remove it. 
I don't think we need to move any frames out. It's pretty heavy, but I've got a couple of frames already out of it, so it ought to move pretty easily. There we go. The smoke between the sections. Let's twist it. Let's just kind of see if we can walk it over here. Ooh, here they come boiling out. All right, I'm going to step back and let that calm down a minute. Aha! I found the queen! with an egg hanging out of her butt. Everybody's like, wow, here's our queen. They're looking at her. I'm glad I saw that egg coming out of her abdomen. You can see they're feeding her. They got a retinue around her. Okay, so this, this hive is gonna do good. Okay, I got my eyes on the queen. She's in the middle of the frame. I'm gonna set her gently back here. That'd be perfect. We're gonna put the hive back together again. I did see eggs, so the queen is released and starting to lay some eggs, so we're happy about that. And now it's coffee time. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for joining us for coffee time. Hi. Coffee time today, I want to talk about friends, having friends, the importance of friendships, and what all that means, because you've been reading a great book that talked about it. Tell us about that, that book and what it said about friendship. Yeah, it's a, it's a great book that's called younger next year younger next year and of course he talks a lot about you know exercise and health and eating right and those kinds of things but one of the most important things that that's in the book and there's been a lot of studies done on it as well so it's backed up by science is the fact that people who age well have a lot of connection with other people mm. a lot of relationships i don't even know if it's got to be like deep relationships but some sort of connected contact. yeah contact with other people whether you're doing it as friends getting out you know together for coffee or if it's volunteering in a kitchen or mm. yeah um, i like that you know spending time with your grandkids or whatever but people who spend a lot of time with other people in social environments age much better wow. and they live a lot longer and they're a lot healthier. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It does, but I'm, I'm such an introvert. <laughs> you know, I know it's very hard for me to make friends. Are you like that? I'm not, but yeah, I know you're asking uh, those out there. I, boy, now I'm an extrovert, right? Oh, Oh, you're over an the over top. the top yeah. extrovert. And people an extroverted not, extrovert. Yeah, people may not really <laughs> that. On camera, I'm kind of I'm I'm much more calmed down and I'm I'm kind of more focused on camera, but one on one, I'm like out, 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 I'm over the top. Yeah. You're the guy at the party with the lampshade on your head <laughs> dancing somewhat, around. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. <laughs> and you are the opposite. I am. Yeah, you uh I you am. know, you you like things to be orderly and calmer and and uh, so I do. I don't like small talk. I yeah. like to get to the point. Yeah. I like deep conversations. Yeah, I don't do. like to talk about the weather right, or right. what you, kind of Yeah, I know. You like science, you like, you like and... art. You're kind of a renaissance woman and, and small talk. <laughs> just kind of crushes you. It does, it does, I, it does. I, I noticed that when we're in a crowd and what do you think about the weather? How has your weather been at your house? And it's just like, yeah. Sherry's like, oh. Sherry's like, oh, my eyes have glazed over and I've gone to sleep. something more meaningful than the weather, you know? <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. Um, and sometimes it's so, like, if you're around people that are like me, it's overwhelming sometimes. I overwhelm you sometimes. <laughs> You almost like get. I need a nap yeah. after I'm with you too long. You, you do. You're like, I gotta rest. I'm tired. You're tired of me. Friendship is so important. Many of you probably have good friendships. I know some of you may struggle with friendships. And I know, Sherry, at times you feel like you don't have a lot of friends. I don't. I don't. You're but my you only friend. Know. You're my only friend that I have. You have lots of friends. You have lots of friends. I have a lot of 
acquaintances. Okay. A, a lot of oh, social oh, contact. I see. Yeah. yeah. I, but I think fr sometimes friendships for you means a lot of responsibility and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, to a, a really close and good friend, you have to really love and take care of them and deal with their drama and all the things that are going on. And sometimes... I that, have enough of my own drama yeah, to deal with everybody else's drama. But I like the book. I, I started reading the book, too, because you were so uh, taken back by it. The guy that wrote it, he's like in his 70s, but he does things like he's 30. He does. I mean, this is a man who's aged very, very well. He's able to go ski with the 30-year-olds. Yeah. And, and I thought about that. You know, you and I are in a sport that has a lot of uh, much younger people in it. Mm -hmm. And I love being around those younger it people. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, I it's know. so nice to see their perspective and hear their, their worldviews from yeah. their age and I think they keep us young. Some of them we spend that much time yeah, with them. Some, some of them are they embrace us really well. Like we're thirty, mm -hmm. and we're, we're mm -hmm. a little older than thirty, but just a little. I like how they, you know, some of them probably value our wisdom, maybe, or they want to be around us to learn, and 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 I think we're fun people to be around, no matter that we. That's are. what it is. We're just fun to be around. <laughs> I don't know how wise we are. We're just oh boy, we're That's just true. fun. But it it is really really nice to have that that social connectedness Absolutely. even even if you do have to go home and take a nap it's <laughs> yeah, still it's still yeah. good you've got to have that connection with other people yeah now for me if i'm alone a lot and i don't have contact with a lot of people or a lot of friends then i need to take a nap that that gets into me it does it does you yeah. you get to you get really kind of down i do mm -hmm. yeah i need i mm -hmm. i receive a lot of energy from other people and that's important mm -hmm. for me I, and so mm -hmm. When I was at EAS, I met a lot of friends, you know, and it was a lot of fun. You met a lot of friends? You mean you met a lot of people? I met a lot of people and became friends with them. <laughs> I did see a lot of friends. See, that's a difference. You no. met a lot of friends. I just meet a lot of people. <laughs> so it depends on how you look at it, I guess. Yeah, you know? all, all of my EAS master beekeepers that we work together out, out at EAS every year, we are such good friends even though we see each other once a year. Uh, Isn't that amazing? It, it is. How you can just pick up with somebody you haven't seen him for a year and you Gosh, just pick up where you left it's off. It's insane how it yeah. is. It looks like it was yesterday. Maybe that's why we're such good friends because we only see each other once a year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they don't need a nap. Would we have a better marriage if we only saw each other once a year? Oh. No. No, that doesn't work that way. No. That would be horrible. Uh, but anyway, I, I saw this couple that... You know, we had a banquet night. That's when the EES master beekeepers that are candidates that pass the test. I think we had five pass out of 25 or 26 that became master beekeepers. So that was kind of cool. But they were, they were, this couple was standing off by themselves the night of the banquet before it started. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I just walked over and introduced myself and started talking to them. And they entered, you know, told me who they were. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys come, come sit at my table. And we'll talk, you know, and it was so good. I, I, I just became friends. Their name, I don't remember their last name, but their name was Robert and Anastasia. And I remembered Anastasia because that's our, one of our granddaughters. Granddaughter's name. name, yeah. And I told her that. But uh, So I had so much fun talking with them that night and just being with them. I can engage people like that so easily. I see, I, I can't. That's very, very hard for me. I need to know that I'm safe around you. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Mm. That, that you're supportive of me. And we don't have to have the same views on things. In fact, I'd love to hear other people's point of views about yeah. things. Yeah. And I think that makes your life even more enriched, you mm. know, when you do have friends that share different world Absolutely. views. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But uh, no, I need to know that you're okay. So, so <laughs> you, you almost need to know people a little more before you can really be friends with them well we can be friends yeah but i might not tell you a lot of deep secrets oh well i never tell my deep secrets to anybody <laughs> i don't even tell you my deep secrets <laughs> wow well. so you know i i was just thinking about how important friendships are and beekeeping allows a lot of friendships we meet a lot of friends i met david tarpey he's a professor entomologist at what South Carolina? He's got so many initials after his name. Yeah, in the east. Sorry, David. I can't Southeast. remember how how all your names. You've earned that. <laughs> Lots of initials after his name. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. he spoke, gave great talks in North Carolina, where I spoke too. And afterward, a bunch of us said, "Hey, Dave, you want to go out to eat with us?" And he was like, "Sure." And he 
he had a restaurant picked out there in Ithaca. At that time, we were in Ithaca. So, so he's not one of those guys who thinks he's all that just no, because he's got a whole bunch of so degrees old, oh, after his I'll, name. He, yeah, that's right. And so he, he just opened up, and he, I liked talking with him a lot. He was a, an easy person to be a friend to. Uh -huh. he, he likes to talk philosophy of life, and he's like you. He wants to get deeper into things, and you can tell he's a deep thinker. And that, I like that a lot. We, Gosh, we just walked around the... The, the town talking, and I that's the first time I ever really got the chance to talk with him, you know, other than hi and good talk, so mm -hmm. very nice, mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. um, but you almost have to be a little outgoing, like you're talking about, to push yourself onto somebody and say, hey, well, you want to go out to eat? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what makes it really, really hard, I think, for a lot of people to make those connections, because sure. I'm just not like that. Yeah. Oh, I've been turned mm -hmm. down a lot. <laughs> Gosh, you would not believe how many times I've been turned out, but I don't care. You don't want to go out with, with eat with me, it's your loss. That's exactly right. That it's has nothing loss. to do with you. That has Ooh. everything to do with them. Yeah. And, you know, if somebody asks me, would you, you want to go out and eat with us, David? I try to always say yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because, you know, even if I don't like it or wished I hadn't done it, um, I still, there's a lot to be gained, and you can make a lot of friendships. It is. Way. I think that's one of the points in the book that he was trying to make, that sometimes, even if it's not necessarily a, a great connection, sure. but it's it's that constant connection. Absolutely. You know, that's important. You know, I I was at EAS. First time I took my Master Beekeeper test was 2009. I was in something like Ellis-Cutville, New York at mm -hmm. the time, and I didn't know anybody at all, Zilcho, right? And I'm there, and I, you know, how awkward that is. First, you're like the new kid at school. <laughs> you don't know anybody. You don't know where any rooms are. Oh, it was awkward. But anyway, I was in a lab, and for some reason we were studying uh, Nozema spores through microscopes. And I was in a pod of like four or five people. Next to me was sitting a, a gentleman, and so he was setting things up, and we chit chatted back and forth, and we just started talking and i i'm really outgoing and he was pretty outgoing so blah 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 long long story short if that's possible with me we became i think it's short story long with you I mean, it's short story long <laughs> yeah and we became good friends at that conference yeah and it was john zavishlock oh is that how you oh, met yeah, him yeah oh. and so when he <laughs> you know he became a master beekeeper that year he got certified that year i got certified the next year but that particular year, 2009, I remember John came up to me and said, Hey, David, uh, you want to go have a beer? And, you know, I don't like beer. I, I mean, I like alcohol, different kind of, you know, <laughs> cocktail drinks. But I don't like the taste of beer. Well, I was like, sure, I'll go, I'll go hang out with you, you know. So he and I just sat down at the bar and talked. And we just became really good friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, he is one of my best all-time friends I've ever had. That's amazing to me because he doesn't live anywhere near no, us. No, he lives in Arkansas. And yet they keep this connection like you wouldn't believe. And I'm just like, if I don't see you every couple of days, I forget who you are. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> You're just completely out of my mind, yeah, you know? Yeah, I know. Gosh, so I wonder, just, I can call him anytime and he, he will talk to me and answer his phone. You want to try it? I should be able to find him easy. He's the last guy under Zavishlock. A lot of people can't under say Z, under Z, but the problem yeah. is you've got like 500 contacts in your phone. I've I got do. six. I do. I have a lot of contacts. <laughs> oh, it's ringing. And that's not even... If he doesn't answer, I'll ruin my reputation. That's right. You'll have to... Uh-oh. <laughs> John Zavishlock. <laughs> took me a minute to find my phone. I stuck it in my lunchbox because it was pouring down rain when I came in. I thought you were slower in answering the phone I, of a good friend. It was buzzing, and I looked around, and I couldn't find it. Oh, wow. Well, you know, your voice is live on one of my videos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, too. <laughs> and Sherry's here on video. I mean, we were just talking about how important it is to have friends, and I was explaining how we met in 2009 at EAS, and I was like, just out of the blue, you know, we hit it off. John's like, hey, you want to go have a beer? And I'm like, yeah, I really don't drink beer, but I'll hang out with you, and lo and behold, even though we don't live near each other, we became great friends. We sure did. It's How amazing. About that? <laughs> it's I amazing. remember 
I That's remember amazing. the first time I met Sherry, and she said, I'm so glad you and David met. Now he has someone besides me to talk about bees with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that remember so that. True. Yeah. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. He's just <laughs> killing me with all this bee talk. Now That's he can talk like... to you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's cool. And we have, boy, we've discussed every aspect of honeybees and beekeeping that we can think of. Oh, and life and everything. Yeah, every, everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. So true, so true. <laughs> well, John, talking about things in common, one of the things that we have in common is we have 14 children uh, together. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah, well, you know, that sounds a little awkward. Between us. Like that that does yeah. sound awkward. Okay. We have 14 children in Between total, us. but it's not just you and me. It's, it's with two other women. Oh, that doesn't sound good either. <laughs> well... Yeah, yeah, you're right. So um, those two women would be our, our separate wives. Okay, that sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> so well, another. I've got eight children with my wife. You have you eight children. children with your wife. And that's why I you love. You got me beat on grandchildren. Oh, for definitely, sure. definitely. But you know that's why I love hanging out with you because at, at conferences people will say, "How many children do you have, David?" And I'll say six, and they go, "Oh my gosh! Oh, you got six kids! Oh!" And then I was like, "John has eight. And like, oh, and it gets the heat off of I us. Take the heat off of me. You know? <laughs> right, Push it over right, there. Yeah, yeah. Well. Anything I can do for you. you know, <laughs> well, those of you watching, you don't realize John is the most brilliant, and this is my opinion, he'll deny it, the most brilliant yeah, scientist on insects, bees, botany, anything I want to know, I'll ask John. He has an answer. I tried to prove him wrong, Sherry, at EAS. He couldn't. I, I thought of a great thing I could stump him on. Aww. Nope. 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 Can't stump John. But so anyway, uh, but John walks around like he's a nobody. He tells everybody he's my cameraman. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, because when we are together, all I ever hear from you is, hey, hold, hold my, my camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was my role. Yeah, I know. Now, now Sherry can say, I'm glad John's a friend of David. He can hold your darn camera. Hold your camera. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, but, you're talking you about know, bees. John has a PhD, everything. He's a sharp cookie. He is. Gosh. He's very smart. All right. Well, oh, I've, I've pieced it together from the backs of cereal boxes. <laughs> 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 well, you buy your cereal at some place. I don't buy mine, obviously. Wow. He eats his Wheaties. Uh, well, PhD is just piling it higher and deeper, David. <laughs> <laughs> higher and deeper. PhD. There you go. There you go. Well, John, if you did it. You, you did it. If you just stay in school long enough, they'll eventually give you a degree to try to get rid of you. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> I had a great time with you in North Carolina and EAS, and you are an outstanding friend. You are a great friend. Oh, shucks. You're not so bad yourself, yeah. despite what Sherry says. I know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go and keep making my video. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Isn't that a great friend? Oh, my gosh. John the Vishlock. you got several of those. I know. They're all scattered throughout the U.S. Have you noticed I that? I do. I was reluctant. Two of your best ones, though, went to Florida. Oh, they did. They moved to Florida. Yeah. You know, I was reluctant to even name one because all my other people are going, well, when are you going to do me? I'm your best friend. Well, you're all my best friends, right? But um, anyway, that's an example of how, you know, just by him saying, do you want to go have a beer? I could have said, nah, I don't drink beer. I don't know you. I and, don't want and, and to miss And miss some of the richest parts of your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. John, John. And see, I probably would have said no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I just got to say yes. I never know who I'm going to meet like that. Yeah, Dang. I have to do better about it. Speaking of meeting great people, look at this. I met this. Uh, this was in North Carolina. This is a, a mom and a daughter. And they run a t-shirt company uh they make things like this mm -hmm. look at this this is like mm -hmm. a go with it and her name is bria and her mom's name is uh, melissa i think isn't it yeah i think it is let's see uh, melissa yeah melissa todd mm -hmm. and this is not a paid promotion they didn't pay me to say this but they're just cool they're just cool people and, they, and probably new gosh. friends of david's <laughs> oh yeah i i became friends i stood in front of their booth and just you know did the david burns they'll, thing they'll go out to eat next time you're i don't know why you go out to eat with them but uh <laughs> it was funny because i told them that I, i'm on youtube and i have a youtube channel and the, the next day i saw her i think in a hotel and i walked into the breakfast bar of the hotel and she kind of stood up and go look everybody 
A YouTube star. It's David Burns. Oh, my gosh. Oh, so funny. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, I want her, Melissa, or Bria, the daughter, uh -huh. is, she's young. I think she's still, like, in high school, maybe. Still but, a teenager? But she, wow. but she does great. She's a beautiful artist. And she painted this. And I told her, I want a painting like this with beehives in the starry night scene. And yeah. I think legally you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah. People, I've seen a lot of those. I've seen a lot of starry nights with little, with lots of different things. And so if I had uh, Bria make a, a cup like this, uh -huh. and it says coffee time. Oh yeah, and they mugs for a, coffee time. Be available oh for you yeah, guys to let's join do that. Coffee time. Let's That'd do be that. Cool. Yeah, let's have Bria make us some coffee mugs. Um, so that'd be I, great. I think that I just want to say that you guys that. Uh, maybe have trouble making friends. You know, I don't know what that's like. I can't relate to you. Sherry can, you know, relate to that. It's hard for Sherry. We can to... be friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need a friends app. Do they make those? Do they like dating oh, wow. apps, but they're just for friends and you can... Darn it. You know. I've actually thought of that. I need a friend within 15 miles. Yes, I've actually thought of that. Which, of course, would be nobody. They've got to have that. <laughs> There's nobody yeah. out here. <laughs> we have a, an occasional deer. <laughs> we make friends with wild animals because we live so far out in the middle Stray of nowhere. Stray cats. <laughs> I, was, I was doing something the other day. Oh, I was on a Zoom meeting, and somebody made a comment about my, I don't know, where I lived. And I, oh, I think my internet was a little sloppy, and I was like, sorry, I don't live near anything that where I can make good internet contact, you know. Uh -huh. So it is harder to make friends when you're out in the middle of nowhere. But um, I don't know, Sherry. I think that people just need to try... A, teeny little bit harder take a baby step and trying to be a little more assertive and be open maybe just be more open if somebody says hey you know you want to go out to eat or do something um maybe say yeah let's let's do that mm -hmm. I don't, i'm not sure how to it encourage people it doesn't matter their age you know one of my best friends is probably 30 35 years younger than me yeah right you know and we get along just fine mm, yeah <laughs> But we and we have different worldviews. Yep. Yeah. And uh, well, that's the thing. I enjoy learning about her Here, worldview. May, maybe this is good. You have to be careful not to only find friends with people that have your exact opinions and your exact. Oh worldviews, yeah, you never grow morals. that way. I don't think. No, you don't. Do I that. don't think you do. I used to be that way actually a little mm -hmm. bit, and, and mm -hmm. it really boxed me in. And I. It does. It does box you, and that's a good way to describe I to, it. I had to start accepting, you know, and. Uh, you don't always, like John said. You don't have to agree. You can agree to disagree, but you can value another human life, even though they hold, they hold different opinions and different things. We're we're losing that in America. Mm. Oh my gosh, mm. there's too much of a, a, a just a definite line that's drawn right, between you and me because oh, you're too you're different. That's just not healthy at all. That's not good. So mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I have a B Team Six member, Sherry. A B Team Six is a mentorship program where people can contact me and beekeeping and ask questions. And mm -hmm. I don't want to embarrass him, and I know he doesn't want this kind of uh, attention. But his name is Michael. He he has been so wonderful. On YouTube, you can leave a a, a thanks tip. Uh, like if you're watching this video at the bottom, it'll say thanks. You can click on there and leave a donation. Mm -hmm. He has left so many donations. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm embarrassed. Thank you, Michael. I called him up and then we were talking. I said, thanks for doing that. I, I don't take that lightly because I know you work hard for your money, right? And he said, David, I what you're giving me is very valuable and you deserve it. And he said, I'm trying to get other people to see that we need to help people succeed. And I'm mm. trying to help them realize they need to be doing that if they see me doing it. That's one way that I think friendships really are important. Friendships allow us to help other people succeed. By coming alongside of people and doing what we can to, like John, to hold my camera when I film or something, you know? It's it's part of that fundamental connectedness is yeah. the compassion and the kindness and the and yeah. the help that you give to other people. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. is that why you think the, the, the author of that book said that you would live longer maybe with friends? Oh, yeah. Because you have a support system? Oh, yeah, exactly. And that support yeah. system is there for you as you get older and need things. And, yeah, right. you know, but if you don't, if you don't cultivate that support system, then, you know, there's nobody there for you as you get older and that just makes it worse. It does. Mm -hmm. Well, you're my best friend. Well, thank you. Wow. Yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine life without you. <laughs> Yeah. You're my best friend, too. Well, thank you. You know, the other day, um, somebody wrote. Um, well, it, the bees are wild, aren't they? They're just foraging. 
somebody wrote into the website, and uh, we get a lot of we get a lot of emails, oh boy, we and do. a lot of a lot of comments, and probably hundreds hundreds every week. So we just can't we we are able to read through all of them. <laughs> Just not able to answer all of them because and, there's you know, just so many of them. But it, but it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful it to nice. to see all of them. It. And it and don't think by any means that we're ignoring no. you for any reason. It's just it's just the way that that it is. But somebody wrote the other day, and it it meant so much to me that you know we we've talked about it a couple of times. But I thought I would just read it. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. So this is from a somebody named Kelly, and and. Um, I'm assuming it's a she, um, that they began beekeeping back in April. And she goes on to say, we found your videos incredibly helpful, both in preparing to start our adventure and addressing any questions along the way. Earlier this year, my husband and I were watching your videos, and during the beekeeping, which is better and faster, a nook or a three-pound package, coffee talk, you talked about being good enough. Mm, I remember that. And that... You know, that, you know, going back to all of that, again, you know, the fact that it doesn't matter what you look like or how much you weigh yeah. or how how fast you are or how smart you are or how much money you are. It, none of that matters. Yeah. You're good enough. Just the way that you are, you're good enough. Absolutely. I feel like Mr. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> you're good enough. Yeah. You're good enough. But near the end, you said you felt like you were touching somebody's soul. I suspect you touched a number of souls and can attest that one was me. Mm. I was stricken by your message that evening, and it helped me through a difficult period at work that started just a few days later. I continue to think about the timeliness and relevance of that coffee talk and how much it meant to me. So thank you very much. Wow, that's very humbling, Kelly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I, I'm glad that coffee time is helping people and i i'm motivated to do coffee time more i know some people are probably like ah, i just want the beekeeping stuff you know yeah yeah but there's a mixture there's yeah i think we got an email right after that says i don't like coffee time <laughs> did you really <laughs> oh i'm glad i don't read my own email <laughs> like, i'm not doing coffee time anymore people hate it <laughs> oh. yep well it's like well don't watch <laughs> Well, you know, you, you can say, okay, here's a beekeeping video. I'll watch the beekeeping things. Uh-oh, now he's going to have coffee time. You don't have to keep watching, right? I mean, right I'd love right. for you to. Don't get me wrong, but you don't have to. That's know. right. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, that just means you're not my friend. <laughs> I want you as my friend. If we were together, we'd go out to eat. That's right. coffee together. That's right. I'll go out to eat with you tonight. Let's do that. Would you take me out to eat? I want to. All right. I let's do that. Figure. Well, thanks, Sherry, for being my friend and talking about friends. And, you know, if you're if you're having a difficult time um, with friends or having friends or you feel lonely, I think that's the killer is just lonely. I, there's times, you know, I feel lonely because I'm out here making videos all by myself and I need friends. I mm -hmm. feel better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I'm around people. Uh, you know, and and because I'm such an introvert and know that I need to make friends, I just join clubs. Oh, that's you one know, way there's to do it. there's a couple of different clubs I'm a part of. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, I know. I'm a I'm around people anyway. Even if yeah. I don't get invited out for coffee. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, I'm still around people and talking and oh, yeah. interacting. We just joined an astronomy club. We did. Oh yeah, we it's, did. It's fun. We bought a telescope. Got and a telescope. Yeah. Joined the club. We bought a telescope and have no idea how to use it. <laughs> and I'm I'm a sharp, you know. Yeah, look at all these cameras and lights. And well, a telescope is not... <laughs> how can you not know how to do a telescope? A telescope isn't technology. It's, it's mirrors and glass. It's manual. It's manual. Yeah. I mean, I need a... I can't... I don't know. You want to push a button and it just... So I need... I need Where's we, Mars? Well, they have that kind they of They do. They yeah. do, but... We should have bought that one, I guess, but I don't know. We're, well, it's fun. We, we have a big interest in uh, astronomy. And we really are fascinated by it, aren't we? Yeah. We have a lot of fun it's time. Cool. But you're right. Going to that club, and they were talking about buying solar panels, and I'm really into solar panels, and they were talking about powering up, you know, telescopes to solar power. So our first night at the meeting, they spent a long time, as most clubs do, voting whether they should buy, you know, solar power mm -hmm. or not. So, mm -hmm. you know. It was everything you could do. Keep your mouth shut, wasn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> it was horrible. I'm like, oh. At the first meeting. Oh, it was terrible. It's like going to a B club meeting. It's like, oh, I got to No, keep, no, mm, don't do that. Don't, 
Terry, like, don't talk to don't. me. Man. Don't, don't say anything. But that's hard for me. Yes. It's really hard. But anyway, you're right. Joining clubs, getting to mm -hmm. know people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's, Learn it's to dance. Oh, I You'll remember You'll meet that. people that way. <laughs> you know, I, I told people that I was going to go dancing with you. And uh, we, we went dancing. I went one time. I just didn't fit in. I don't. I feel like a klutzy um, giraffe on ice. Uh, I just can't dance. I'm not a good dancer. Although in the, when I find my queen, you know, I have that video clip of us dancing. Uh, I didn't do too bad there. <laughs> you just <laughs> went in a circle. <laughs> just, That's dancing. Now you're criticizing me. I don't feel good enough for you. You're you're good enough. I'm gonna go take dancing lessons. And then they'll be like, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> Would you stop coming, please? <laughs> yeah, you need to get into basket weaving or something. You don't need to be a dancer. I really think if I had an instructor, I could wow you. There's a lot of dancers watching. They're calling us. Hey, we'll give you free lessons, David. Uh, I could make friends by joining a dance club. People do ballroom go. dancing. They do. Yeah, they really they do. They like that. It's a lot of things you could do. Yeah, but anyway, to connect. Uh, don't feel bad if you're kind of wrestling with friendships and you think, oh, I know that'd be healthier. I just can't do it. We lost a lot of ability to to connect during COVID. Mm. Everybody got stuck in their homes and couldn't kind of renew friendships. Like couldn't go out to eat or go to movies together. And we're trying to build that back up slowly, I think, and carefully. But hopefully, things will return soon. Beekeeping prov provides a lot of opportunities for friendships. Like I said, EAS, uh, bee clubs uh, can help you establish friendships. So don't be a loner. Uh, be friends. And remember, even if you don't have a lot of friends near you, where were your friends? David and Sherry. <laughs> we're glad to be friends with you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.